Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac Atford Plus. I was hitting the space bar, the space bar was not doing anything. Hold on, hold on, there we go, we got it figured out. So I was just turning Cheat Engine on, and to prove that I'm using Cheat Engine, I'm, I guarantee personally we're going to start with Mom's Eye Remote Detonator. All right, Mom's Wig and Mr. Meesix. Looks like I'm safe for another day. 3-9 TQ Burpee. Ooh, one makes you larger and some Gul'dan poops. Um, Mom's Wig is pretty good. Our HP is obviously horrible. You might think our stats suck, but I actually, uh, I heartily disagree. I would honestly take this. Uh, and I mean, there's an obvious problem. The problem is that our, our damage stat is not that high. But I would still take this. Oh my word. How could I not? I think it's an improvement. I honestly think it's a DPS improvement. Obviously it doesn't help us out too much with the poop. But anyway, um, I would honestly take a run with a high rate of fire, low damage. And, you know, I'd stack that up against a run with a, you know... Below average rate of fire, but above average damage. I really would prefer the rate of fire in most contexts. Now, you might say, hey, NL, this is what you get. <laughs> when you say that you value rate of fire, well, prove it. Well, you know what? I'm happy to do so, my man. I'm happy to give it a try. I'm not uh, anti-soy milk, to be honest. I'm just not universally pro-soy milk. You know, I have a nuanced opinion. I think there's good people on both sides of the soy milk debate. Um, and good opinions on both sides of the soy milk debate. If you're a never-take-soy-milk kind of person, all I can think of is that, there, you know, were it not for the grace of Ed, I would probably be in that boat myself. Lord knows it has ended uh, many a streak for me without a, a shadow of a doubt. If you're an always soy milk sort of person, I understand that as well. You know, you gotta get down with the Zane. Look who we got our Zanes on now and all that. Um, it's mostly a meme item for now. You know, we're probably going to generate more spiders. Our spiders are gonna do substantially less damage, though. Apart from that, our DPS may be improved slightly, but that might be compensated for in a negative way by the knockback. Um, being increased and, and causing enemies to ricochet around the room, especially, you know, certain certain foes are particularly bad for this. No! I had it. I had it within my grasp. Monstro. Here's what I'm thinking. I really, I mean, we have a lot of space left on this floor. We got a lot of time. So I'm gonna send Mr. Mesix over here to do some damage. Thinking, you know, it might be nice to have a little bit of a DPS enabler here. Give us a little bit of extra punch. I am so disappointed that I took damage, though. Um, we still have a one-third chance of getting a deal with the devil, more or less. But, uh, I mean, I guess our HP is not really in a position to take it, either. Yeah, fair enough. Um, let's see, what's our... It's our card. Two of spades. Might seem a little reckless, and I mean, in indeed, it is a little reckless to pop it this early. Um, but I do know that I want to go to the shop on this floor, because that's the the real value of Mr. Me6, to be honest. What am I looking for? Dude, I don't know. That's where we're, uh, we're in a weird spot. I don't really know what I'm looking for on this run, to be 100% clear with you. I, uh, at this point... Sure. Uh, hive Mind, that'd be a big one. Oh, I knew it. Oh, I knew we were going to lose our Eternal Heart. Um, I also would not mind, oh no, living uh, to, to have an attempt to potentially win the run. I think that would be a really positive thing for me. If I could uh, live long enough to... Uh, 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 radio silence just temporarily there we go okay good stuff um i stood right next to that fire as well that could have gone so wrong okay so please 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 you coward the exact item i asked for was on display 
Mr. Mesix, what do you do for me in my time of need? Nothing. That's what you do for me in my time of need. You do absolutely friggin' nothing. You know what? It's good. All it means is the next floor is gonna be a real problem. That's all I can say about that. Do not do this. You you are a fool. Don't do it. So I I, I mean I wanted to. <laughs> okay. Well, Rose Remote Detonator Mom's perfume. What did I say it was going to be? I was I remember I was like it's going to be Remote Detonator Mom something. That's such a strange coincidence. I don't think I said perfume. That doesn't that doesn't seem like me. Anyway, well, you know, some pretty poor performances. I really actually thought at the time that going into that uh, curse room was wise. I knew it wasn't wise to walk in between the blue fires and try to open the red chest. But hey, here's the thing. If you want to make the big time plays, and you know, you want to be the guy who uh, gets the Zane in the videos, sometimes that Zane's not going to work out for you. Imagine if I walked in there, and I opened up the red chest and there were two spirit hearts. Or a troll bomb popped out at the other side, blew up four fires, we got four spirit hearts. We could have lived by going into the curse room anyway, just by using the, uh, the stars card, but anyway. Dude, I gotta tell you, I'm kinda... <laughs> such a poor performance, but I'm riding on cloud nine right now. And I wanna tell you that for one of my other series, there will be a spoiler here. You know what? I can't... Let me just put it this way. I'm not going to spoil it. Even though I want to talk about it, um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it, okay? All I'm going to say is that I accomplished something very impressive in one of the games I'm playing right now. Now, I know you're probably like, I bet it's blank. Well, you could be right, but keep in mind, I got a lot of, you know, potentially impressive stuff on the go. I've been grinding for months to try to get Ascension 20 victories on Slay the Spire. That would be huge. I'm playing Tetris 99, looking for my first win ever. That would be enormous, and a validation of my intelligence as a human being as well, which would be nice. Um, yo, this is such a good room. Yeah, I think this is where we want to be. Although with keys, do I want stars? I don't really care about the Alge's rune this early, honestly. Um, with keys, we should go back and open these. Well, still think the stars card to save a key is a little bit better. Anyway, what else we got going on? Uh, Civilization, dude, is the first campaign I've you know ever played, except for that multiplayer campaign where basically halfway through I just went, I don't really know what's going on, and uh, you know decided. Uh, just to try to screw other people over, which is kind of the spirit of strategy games once you figure it out you're in a losing position to begin with, right? Anyway, I'm just saying, we got a lot of things on the go right now. Hey, come down here, please. But I accomplished one of them, and I'm loving life. It's been, uh, you know, a pretty stressful couple of weeks. We got, uh, you know, I, I can't remember if I brought it up, but, uh, you know, the network that I was partnered with on YouTube for, like, seven years got bought out by another company, and I finally got, you know, all that riffraff sorted out. Everything's A-OK, -okay, but, you know, it's a stressful situation anytime there's a instability in the platform. Meanwhile, YouTube is simultaneously making... Uh, tweets on their public account that is like, uh, yeah, we've started to consider that, uh, if you got, uh, toxic comments on your video, your video might be demonetized. And people are like, ah, uh, are you okay? Hmm, <laughs> it seems you're criticizing YouTube and yet simultaneously you're using their platform to do so. Quite ironic, wouldn't you? Okay, sure. Fair enough. Um... But yeah, you know, there's a little instability there. It's tax season as well you might be like how long is tax season dude i'm i'm getting out of this floor thank god for the emperor card actually i'm just leveling with you it never ends <laughs> i think it's i'm not saying it's a uniquely me or a uniquely youtuber problem but i think it happens as soon as you uh 
essentially place yourself in the in the bucket of being self-employed. Tax season goes from like, oh man, I gotta fill out some forms and dope, uh, one thousand dollar check from the government. That's crazy, and it, it starts to become like you know, every day is pain. Um, oh wait, mate, you got a license for that receipt? Regardless, to get a big gaming achievement. Felt nice, I gotta say. You know, is as a 30-year-old man, I should probably be deriving my uh, sense of self-worth from other, you know, sources. Got a loving family. I, I've made a, a life for myself. I got a community of people who, for the most part, enjoy or at least tolerate what I say. Or they have just made watching my content uh, such a habit of theirs that they're worried that they'll die if I if they stop watching um, but either way you know I am deriving a lot of uh, my self-worth right now from video game related accomplishments <laughs> embarrassingly enough oh well feels good though and dude I, I think I mentioned it but I'm like I'm, I probably mentioned it like 20 times but there's so many, like, media, except for games. Like, I feel like games have been in a really good spot this year so far. But, you know, movies and TV, I've kind of found them a little bit in a lull. And I watched The Good Place. Okay, you know, maybe I'll watch The Freaking Good Place. But uh, I've basically just been bouncing back and forth between one true crime documentary and the next. In April, Game of Thrones, final season. Uh, well, March is Captain Marvel. Avengers Endgame and let me tell you if you're going like oh, I hate to hearing about uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Game of Thrones You should be stoked and I mean that sincerely Because this is the final season of Game of Thrones. You're gonna hear about it a lot for like two months and then very very rarely I think from that point onwards And if you're you know oh, every movie at the multiplex is a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Oh, do you want to go see some of the way? Well, you, you want to go see uh, Fighting with My Family? That surprisingly well reviewed uh, wrestling biopic. No, the trailer was cut like garbage. Oh, do you want to go see uh, Isn't It Romantic? The kind of Rebel Wilson led romantic comedy that's kind of like a gender bent uh, shallow hell. No, it looks cliche. You, I, I'm just. You know, I, I see these comments, people talk, I, I was talking on my Sunday show about like being at the movie theater and how I think like American movie theaters are pretty great, Canadian movie theaters are lagging behind a little bit. Saw people in chat that were like, I haven't been to the movie, or I haven't been to the movies in nine years. I said, really? Nine years? That's so oddly specific. I know you. the last movie you saw was Inception, I can smell it. I love Inception, by the way, I'm not insulting you, I'm just saying. Then you ask them like, well, why haven't you been to the movies? And, Nine years, and they go, eh, nothing worth seeing. <laughs> it's all just dang old remakes and cinematic universes. Well, it, it is and it isn't. I feel like there's a bizarrely uh, high percentage of people out there that are like, I don't want to see a remake, a sequel, or um, a cinematic universe property in the movie theaters. I think it's a blight on the industry. And you go, okay, well, you want to go, there's a new uh, foreign movie. You want to see that, maybe? And they go, no. Why would I see that on the big screen? It's like the only thing that will make some of these people happy is if there's an endless supply of, like, uh, you know, completely original, high-concept science fiction films with special effects and sound that requires or at least incentivizes seeing them on the big screen. I.e., you're never going to be happy, you know? Because this is it's just the economics of the industry. It's not really how it works. I guess, at least. I saw Arrival in theaters. I did my part. I didn't see Blade Runner 2049 in theaters, but I saw it on an airplane. I'm assuming they collect that data and send them a check for 45 cents later. I don't know how it works. Um, I'll go see Dune. Absolutely, brother. Anyway, if you're if you're not a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Endgame, I, I, I'll even call it. I think 2018 was probably peak Marvel for a long, long time. Black Panther came out surprisingly well-received. 
and I would say at least on a small time scale, an enduring cultural legacy and relevance. Even nominated for Best Picture, which uh, it, it lost last night. Um, and I, again, I've said it many times. I don't think Black Panther is Best Picture worthy for me personally. Um, but anyway, I'm just saying it was in the conversation at least, which is amazing. In in if you want to put it in the politest way possible. Um, and then you had Infinity War, which was really like the culmination of 10 years of uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe buildup. So like, yeah, Endgame is the is the finale of that, but I really feel like Infinity War is going to be like peak Marvel. In Infinity War plus Black Panther in like a two month time span. That's the peak Marvel uh, fervor. Thor Ragnarok, like November, Black Panther February. Infinity War Part 1 in April. So I think you're already on the way uh, towards not hearing about Marvel as much for the for the time being. Now, on the other hand, you had to hear a lot about Spider-Verse, which I guess is part of the... I mean, that, that came out in 2018 as well. But, uh, you know. I just get... You know, there's... And I've been this person before in my life, by the way. Um, and, and still probably now at times as well. Like, for example, with Undertale. Uh, which I was wrong about, and that is a great game. Yes, the community got a little bit... Out of politeness, I'm not going to say up their own butt. Um, but, you know, very uh, grassroots organization that was clearly very enthusiastic, is a good way to describe it. It was very juvenile of me to let me, uh, or for me to let myself be put off for that. It's a great game. Um, and I know that there's people out there, because I see the tweets. That are like, man, this Spider-Verse movie, it's got everything, huh? Apparently, if I see it, it's going to change my life. Here's the thing. No, it, I mean, it, it probably won't change your life, but it was really good. I know that, especially, and I can only speak to, you know, my own experience, and, and particularly, like, you know, my own, my older self, you know? But, hey, you know, it can seem tempting in life. To derive a certain level of assumed credibility just from feeling like you're the only person in the room who sees things clearly. You know, there's some people out there, and there's positives and negatives for, for both sides of this, but there's some people out there who if everybody says, you know, X is great, they go, yo, dude, just give me the stats. I just want the stats for now. They go, yo, dude. Yeah, babe. X is great. Did you hear? X is great. Even before they've seen it. Yo, dude, I can't wait to see X. Um, but there's also some people out there, and it works the other way. You know, everybody's like, X is so good, even before they've seen it. There's no way X could possibly so good, possibly be so good, sorry, as to warrant this level of attention. And I think those people, and again, I think we're all in both camps at times, you know? But I think those people, even when they go to see the movie, not just Spider-Verse, but, you know, maybe it's not even a movie, maybe it's a TV show, maybe it's a video game, maybe it's a webcomic. When they go see it, they're going to be predisposed to be like, yeah, well, I mean, it's okay, but I didn't think it was that good. I feel like that's the reaction, you know? I mean... I liked it, but, you know, what about that? Yeah, you get the idea. I'm just saying. Take it from me, your resident YouTuber, uh, baby boomer. Um, it's way cooler to genuinely give your opinion on whether you like or dislike something in a well-reasoned fashion, as opposed to letting the shape of public discourse affect it. I'll even admit, you know, and it goes both ways, and that's the thing, it feeds off of each, you know, someone might be like, I don't really, like, how good could Spider-Verse be? It's just like a superhero movie, and then people will be like, Spider-Verse is the greatest thing ever, and you're stupid for not thinking it's great, and then they go, well, if you're gonna call me stupid, I'm gonna double down, and be like, you know, well, I'm now I really hate it. I have the same thing going on with Hollow Knight, and, you know, I should have talked about this a long time ago, but people think... I don't like Hollow Knight. That's not the case. 
I have made fun of Hollow Knight and the Hollow Knight community sometimes in the past. I wouldn't even say made fun. I didn't take nothing and make it fun. I poked fun. There was a little fun in the environment with me and I went boop. I think Hollow Knight is a very, very, very good game. It is not, for me, one of the best indie games ever made. I think. And that has led to two different things. One of them is people go, what the heck, dude, you don't like Hollow Knight? And the other one is I go, you know what, maybe I don't like Hollow Knight, but what I've realized is that it's not that I don't like Hollow Knight, is that I don't like being asked whether or not I like Hollow Knight, or having to explain myself, feeling like I have it, I have to explain myself, I should say, for not thinking it's the most incredible game released in 2017. And that's not fair of me either, you know? Without a doubt. Anyway, I'm just, I'm airing my grievances here. I gotta open up my door. It's 29 degrees Celsius. You might be wondering, hey, Anel, how's your back? It's good. Thank you for asking. I mean, it's still like it's a little tender. You know, I was tired. I failed that squat. Uh, yeah, not yesterday, actually. Like, less than 12 hours ago. I'm really, I'm, I'm apprehensive to see how my back feels tomorrow. You know, I, I got some errands to run. And believe it or not, here's the thing, you know, at, at different points in my life, I've been, uh, not bedridden, but I've, I've hurt my back doing such strenuous tasks as eating or uh, sitting down is another good one. Um, getting out of bed one time threw my back into a weird, you know, tender state for like a week. I'm not joking. This is when I was in my 20s too. So I'm really worried that, you know, Squatting with a triple digit weight and having to fail and bail out from under the bar might have might have pulled a muscle or something like that. I'm not trying to brag if anything it's embarrassing. But hopefully all the isolated bicep curls I've done in the squat rack will insulate my back somehow from the the pain that it's about to feel tomorrow. I also, you might be saying, NL, how's your back? You've been watching me play Apex? You've been watching me carry the team? I don't want to brag. I haven't played... The Apex bug has is gone for me for the time being. It's not to say that it's a bad game. I've just, you know, temporarily... I mean, really, Tetris 99 has become my, my obsession recently. Legitimately put, you know, 20 hours into that in two weeks, which is a decent chunk for yours truly, at least. Um, but... Uh, yeah, in the uh, we I streamed Apex Legends two nights in a row. Uh, well, I didn't stream my perspective on one of them, but you know, it, you know there's a little bounty system on Twitch, you know, and uh, there was a bounty for Apex Legends, a game that I already played. So I was like, "This is a match made in heaven." Kate did the bounty first, played with her. I'm not gonna say I carried the game, but I I did. As the last member of our team alive, got a victory. There's still, if you're anti-Battle Royale, I gotta tell you, man. I, there are very, very few feelings um, in games, or in gaming, I should say, like winning a Battle Royale. Especially feels sweet if you actually participated. There were a lot of PUBG wins where, like, I just went like, eh, let's go. You know, it doesn't feel the same because Austin got 12 kills and you got, you know, six damage. Yo, this is an incredible room. But if you participate and you get the kill, it's the thrill of the kill, my man, in a big way. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, I've, uh, I, I've uh, been good at a few games in my life. I was really, you know, decent. And I don't, I don't mean decent as in like, you know, top 50%. I mean decent as in like top point. 1% in Project Gotham Racing 2 on the original Xbox routinely, you know I, I there were nights would happen where I would win every single race that I would play um, and you know how it feels you go, yeah I won, I won yeah I won, yeah I won that one. Oh, this guy beat me by a half second I gotta watch his replay to see how he did the line oh, I won, I won that one, okay and then, you know, I was there was a time in my life, you may not believe it, I don't blame you for having a healthy degree of skepticism, but you can ask Josh. 
I was pretty dang good at Halo 2. I wasn't going around to your local community centers and Best Buys uh, playing in tournaments because that ecosystem didn't exist where I lived. But I was near the top of the lobby, or at the top of the lobby, most of the games that we played. How did I feel about that? Very frustrated when uh, I was losing. When I was winning, it was just neutral. Neutral, sort of like, yeah, I won. Of course I won. I deserve the win. I'm a better player than the guys on the other team. You know, very just entitled is a good way to describe it. Not a positive emotion. How do I feel when I win a battle royale? Literally like Will Smith realizing his lifelong dreams in the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> and I don't mean like... You know, the first time I won in a battle royale. I mean literally every time I win it. any battle royale. If I had a hand in it at any level. It feels like the very first time. It, it feels great, dude. Thank Depths too. Okay, so we're, we're moving on. I mean, this is an incredible run. I do wish in hindsight uh, that I hadn't taken Ludo. Just so we could get that really impressive... Uh, Rate of fire on us plus on the incubus that would look nice, but I mean we got a great thing going on here For my money, there's no sweeter feeling in video games than winning a battle royale I actually can't like the feeling that I get when I beat like a story driven game versus uh, winning in a battle royale one is like one percent of the other It's great. I don't know what it is is it I, I and you know dota is kind of you know, another one you could bring up, because, like, I feel like when I win a Dota game, I go, like, let's go. Or when I won a Dota game. I still have not played, uh... Well, I played Auto Chess two rounds on the show and was like, I don't think it's for me. More power to you if you love it. And I mean that sincerely. But, uh... You know, when I won a game of Dota, I was like, well, I had fun. Good job, Carrie. Did you like my wards? When I win a game of a Battle Royale, I'm like exalted. It's like I just got picked first in the NFL draft. Every valley. Have I done this bit? Kate and I do. It's one of our little couple inside jokes. She performed in like a Christmas uh, performance. And uh, it's the second time. Actually, it's the third time I've, uh, I've seen opera. Because uh, oftentimes, you know, as an oboist, she ends up playing in these performances that are, I mean, operatic. Um, but if you've never seen an opera, or an opera singer, well, I guess I shouldn't say an opera, because that's not really fair. Uh, because most operas that I've seen have been uh, in Italian, and as a result... I have no idea what's being said. This is more of like a it's a like a religious opera or something like that. Um, one of the performances is is a song called "And Every Valley Shall Be Exalted," and literally, and this is no shame on the singer who did a workmanlike performance, but the words of the song are literally like "Every Valley," and then there's a little thing in the background. <laughs> shall be exalted and every valley shall be exalted every valley shall be exalted and the <laughs> and the hills laid plain and every it just literally i i'm almost at this point i know you're like this is annoying going nowhere every valley shall be exalted and the hills made low. Yeah, that's right. It's from the Messiah chorus. That's it. And the crooked be made straight. And the rough places plain. And every valley. Go. I'm being real with you. You might find it inspiring. For all I know. Go YouTube. Every valley shall be exalted. And tell me that if you're watching that through the eyes of a millennial in the year 2019, that's not going to become an in-joke with you and whoever you see it with. Because I'm, I'm not hating on the Messiah. Although I will say, I've seen it twice at this point. And I, all I'm going to say is the first one uh, dang near killed me. The second one, thank God it was highlighted excerpts. Um, it's 900 hours long. And the vast majority of it is repeating the last thing that they said, but in a slightly different tone. Um, you know what? With dry, uh, not dry baby, uh, dark bomb. I think we can afford to do this.
And the rough place is plain. Just over and over and over and over again. Please do me a favor. You will be like, that's what people get dressed up and go see that stuff in the 1800s. Now, I, well, I don't know when Handel lived, to be honest, but it's probably 17 or 1800s. Um, you know what? I gotta check that. You never know. It might, it might be on the Jeopardy exam. Handel. Died 1759. All right. Fair enough. But he was born in 1300. No, that would be. Can you imagine? There was just one dude. He was 450 years old. And then you were like, hey, did you know that Bach lived to be 450? And everyone was just like, yeah, bre. Yeah, bre. You didn't know that about Bach? It's like the first thing everybody learns about Bach. You learn um, Twinkle Tickle Little Star. You learn about uh, Baroque compositions. And then you learn that that son of a gun lived to be 450 years old. Can you imagine having that gap in your knowledge? Wouldn't that blow you away? I'd be like, if one day I just, you know, imagine you never knew about the moon landing. And then somebody was like, yeah, it's like, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And you were like, oh, that's, that's a good uh, quote. What's that from? Oh, this uh, the first words Neil Armstrong said on the moon. The, the first words, a uh, what? The first words, uh, who said on the where? Like, I don't even, maybe you weren't in a coma, but you were just like, I don't know. You were on a bender for a couple of years. You missed the whole moon landing stuff. <laughs> How ubiquitous do you think knowledge has to be? Let's just take, uh... North Americans, let's even say Americans, like from the United States of America, of an adult age, sound mind, and like, i.e., not dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, other, you know, potential uh, physiological reasons that could affect their memory and reasoning skills, their executive functions. How ubiquitous does a piece of knowledge or human experience have to be for it to be universal? And the rough place is plain. And the... Because um, here's what I mean. I refuse to believe that if you took uh, a million 40-year-olds from the United States uh, that fell into, like, the... Again, the same category as before. You know, sound mind, strong hearts, wide eyes, clear hearts, whatever. Um, it's called Friday Night Lights. Look it up, sweetheart. I refuse to believe, if you took a million of them, surely I wasn't liking that floor anyway. I don't believe you would find one that doesn't, that, that is unaware of the moon landing. I know a million is a very large number. So how, uh, how universal do you have to get? Where, where would you buy into this, uh, to this prop bet? It's a tough one, right? JFK assassination. I believe if you took a million people, you could find somebody who did not know that Sir John F. Sir John F. Kennedy. Sorry, that's a Canadianism coming out. Sir John A. McDonald. Um, I, uh, I, I believe you would find a few people, at the very least, that did not know that uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. So then we can go a little bit lower. Um, I'm, I'm really trying to think of, like, these landmark moments, you know? I don't know, maybe? Now I'm going back. I'm like, could you find what... Like, I, by the way, you might be thinking, well, you know, I could definitely find somebody who doesn't believe that the moon landing happened. That's not what I'm asking. I believe you would probably, as, as misanthropic as it makes me, I bet you would find 10 to... I hate to say it, 10 to 50,000, maybe even more? people that would be like, well, I know that NASA, you know, said they landed on the moon. Oh, you believe that? You believe the moon landing myth? Next, you're going to tell me they put fluoride in the water for your teeth. That's not what I'm asking. They would be aware of the moon landing as a conceptual thing. You know what I mean? I, I can't even think of any other examples. Because everything I'm thinking of is like, you know, 
it's it's just ridiculous. Like, could you name the star that provides its light to Earth? If there is a single, I mean, I think if you phrase the question better, one million out of one million people would get that correct, right? It's the sun or soul or whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, I know you might even be thinking, NL, you're you're underrating two things: the size of the number one million, and the general stupidity that some people can exhibit. Trust me, my man. I live my life on Twitch and YouTube. I've seen a lot of comments that have made me, uh, you know, they've dulled my senses with respect to having a lot of faith in mankind. I just refuse to believe that if you took a million mentally capable people, you would find somebody with that gap in their knowledge. But I don't know. Maybe it's the case. So you, you always see these things on... Uh, on... Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, etc., etc., where, you know, people will be like, you know, I've never had a potato in my life. Now, I think there's a big difference between never having a potato and not being aware that the moon landing happened. I'm just saying, we got, who knows, dude? You, you got a homeschooled kid and his parents didn't believe in the NASA fable, and then they decided not even to teach him about the moon landing, and they insulated him or her completely from the, you know, media influence over the course of their life. Maybe you could get one. What do you think? Anyway, this is a weird topic of conversation. Very, very strong run. Hey, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Help us out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya! Gotta bring up OBS, but see ya!